Welcome to Houston Sports Talk with your host, Robert Land. Thanks for checking into the best Houston sports podcast. And back with us is my old friend from the glory days at the Mizzou Broadcast Journalism School, Andy Rio, who's also a veteran NFL and fantasy football expert. And he's going to do a weekly segment. That's the plan during NFL fantasy season. And Andy, I know you're in a good mood because football season started this weekend. <laughs> yes, definitely. Very happy to have football back. Very happy that we got uh, long seasons ahead of us, both in college and uh, pro. It's a lot of uh, mixed bag opinions on Mizzou. Hopefully uh, we'll surprise some people this year. Sure would be nice. And uh, we got to get to some Texans fantasy stuff to start with. But first, just a quick reminder, uh, I'm on TikTok now at Houston Sports Talk. Robert, I've joined the TikTok generation and I'm posting short videos I call Robert Rant. So look for those both on TikTok and YouTube. Also, if you're an Astros fan, don't miss my last show with Astros blogger, Larry the GM. You'll definitely want to listen to that. All right, Andy, I, I texted you after the first Texans preseason game. I'd fallen madly in love with Damian Pierce. I was sending him roses and chocolates. It's not even Valentine's Day yet. It looks like Cupid's arrow hit the fantasy world because yesterday, you texted me, you drafted Pierce in one of your leagues. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, he's not gotten to the point where he's like any kind of first or second round pick or anything like that. I mean, drafts earlier this offseason, he would have been going in the double digit rounds. Now he's more towards the middle. But if you've got a draft strategy where you're loading up on wide receivers early, he certainly makes sense as one of the later running backs to grab since it looks like he's going to be the lead back for the Texans and he looks very good. Uh, he's even somebody you could grab even if you do take uh, several running backs early on and really load up at the position. Yeah, I, I mean, it just I'm just amazed at what he's been able to do so far. And, and I think he's the number one guy because I think Levy's fallen in love with him. Speaking of love, uh, Levy loves him, so that's good. Uh, before I ask you about fantasy prospects, for Davis Mills, how do Brandon Cooks and Nico Collins look? Hey, if Cooks could get a thousand yards last year, he could do it any year and call me crazy, but I believe Nico's turned a corner, Andy, and he looks like the offseason work, all that offseason work that he did with Mills and the two guys did together, that could mean a lot for more targets for Nico Collins. Yeah, Nico is a guy I definitely like as a sleeper. I mean, he probably will be one of those guys that will be available in the double-digit rounds. And at that point, uh, you know, a lot of the other wide receiver prospects are kind of iffy. I mean, I kind of like him as a young guy with some upside. As far as Cooks goes, um, you know, he's going to be available as a starter, and he looks like he's going to be a pretty consistent, dependable uh, weekly starter. I mean, Pierce probably has the most side of upside of any Texan on the roster, but if you're looking for a steady guy, Cooks is definitely the Texan to target. Any rounds that people are looking to get those guys or where, where would you put those on, on your average, I guess, fantasy league? Well, Cooks would be probably available probably somewhere generally between rounds five and seven. And that's kind of the range now for Pierce as well. Uh, Collins, you know, probably more, like I said, double digit rounds. Uh, Davis Mills, I know uh, we were going to touch upon him as well. Uh, he's obviously got more value in the super flex formats, which are, of course, formats that you can play two quarterbacks. And of course, there are some mandatory two quarterback leagues. So he's going to be one of those guys that would be drafted kind of as a low end second starter. But uh, with if Collins takes a step forward, Cooks continues to be dependable and Mills continues his own growth. Uh, he's somebody that could definitely uh, turn into a reliable player in those formats. As far as the one quarterback formats go, there might be a few games where you could, uh, you know, stick him in the lineup. Maybe your regular starter is injured or on by, and uh, he might be able to deliver the goods for you. I mean, 32 NFL quarterbacks, where is Davis Mills? Where, where do you put him in, a, in, in all your fantasy quarterbacks? What, what, what would you rate him? Well, he's probably going to be in the 20 to 32 range. I mean, probably more in the middle 20s. And that's not necessarily a negative reflection on Davis Mills. It's just the quarterback is a very deep position. Uh, in most leagues where you only have to play one, uh, certainly you could grab somebody like Josh Allen early, but uh, you can also wait a little while and still get a reliable starter. I mean, guys like uh, Derek Carr and Kirk Cousins uh, might be poised for their biggest seasons yet. 
and they're still not being drafted as starters in one quarterback formats. Levy's defenses have a habit of turnovers, touchdowns, and causing havoc, and we've seen it already in the preseason. Can the Texans' defense be a sneaky play for some fantasy owners? Maybe once in a while in a matchup, but I mean, they're still uh, they still need more infusions of talent at this point. So I, they definitely have some games where where the matchups could be good. I mean, if you look at their schedule they're playing the nfc east this season maybe the giants is a place where you could start them for example i think jacksonville is going to be better but you could potentially start them against the jaguars and, and maybe a few other occasions but at this point uh, i wouldn't start the season with them on your roster well their quarterback schedule is pretty tough this year out of division andy but I, i'll just say the quarterbacks in the division that the texans defense are going to play are, are not that great unless Trevor, Trevor Lawrence makes a big jump this season. Well, that's true. I would agree with you on that. But uh, Matt Ryan's a pretty steady hand in, in Indianapolis now. I personally think the Colts are going to win the division. And Lawrence, obviously, is going to take a real step forward now that uh, Urban Meyer is long gone from Jacksonville. All right, let's look at fantasy impact of the major offseason moves because some big ones – Texans fans, they're happy about A.J. Brown being in Philadelphia now. What does that mean for A.J.'s fantasy prospects with Jalen Hurts, the Channel V product? Well, he goes to Philadelphia, of course, as the number one receiver, and that was something the Eagles were dramatically lacking. Devontae Smith showed promise as a rookie, but A.J. Brown will kind of take that offense to another level. Uh, I personally think uh, he's going to be just fine in Philadelphia. The Eagles became very run heavy at the end of last season. Uh, I suspect that's going to probably, uh, you know, taper off a bit because AJ is their best offensive talent. Uh, I think he's going to potentially send Jalen Hurts, who's been a very good fantasy quarterback uh, so far in his career, potentially through the stratosphere because uh, you know, you've got that guy that can just, you know, take a five yard pass and turn it into a 70 yard touchdown at any time. And you still have Smith, who's capable of big things. You still have a very capable tight end in Dallas Goddard, who is uh, going to become uh, a full time starter. He did kind of towards the end last year. And this is the first year they don't have Zach Ertz, uh, who's out in Arizona. So uh, Philadelphia's offense is definitely going to be a good one. And I personally just decide fantasy it would pick the eagles to win the nfc east as far as tennessee goes uh you know that offense uh without aj brown i mean i i just i would not invest in ryan Tannehill. uh you know derrick henry certainly you're hoping for a revival but he's risky because he has a lot of wear and tear on him uh that passing game they took burks from arkansas he has not uh, set the world on fire this preseason uh, Robert Woods has always been reliable coming over from the Rams, but he's coming off of an injury. So not a lot to get real excited about with the Titans, but definitely a lot to get excited about with Philadelphia. In honor of the Eagles, can you give us a little classic Merrill Reese? Merrill Reese, uh, Roger, can you do this? Give me a little bit. You're, you're great at your Merrill Reese. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Hurts the Brown for the touchdown. <laughs> Um, next up, uh, Tyree kill leaves Patrick Mahomes for South beach. Can he put up those kind of numbers with the dolphins? I personally think he's not going to match that production. I mean, uh, you know, the opinions vary pretty wildly about to attack of Iloa at this point. Uh, and I think he's obviously poised for his best season because he does have Hill coming over and, and Jalen Waddle, uh, was very good as a rookie for Miami. They've also brought in. Uh, guys like Chase Edmonds and Raheem Mostert to uh, prop up the ground game, which means, uh, you know, they could defense won't be able to fully key on Tua. But, you know, with all due respect to Tua, he is not as good as Patrick Mahomes. And I, you know, don't see downgrading quarterbacks uh, as ever a positive, really, especially when you have somebody like Waddle uh, that can take up a lot of the targets. So, I, I mean, personally, Tyreek, probably will still be a reliable starter. I don't see him, you know, falling off the face of the earth or anything like that, but yeah, it, it's a downgrade. And, you know, the big question for Kansas city is uh, who is going to take up a lot of Tyreek slack. I mean, of course, Travis Kelsey is still going to be heavily involved and um, you know, you could easily take him as the first tight end off the board. It'd be between him and Mark Andrews of Baltimore. Uh, Juju Smith Schuster comes over after some lost seasons in Pittsburgh 
And he seems to be the guy that a lot of people are pointing towards as somebody that'll take up a lot of the slack, but they also brought in Marquez Valdez Scantling from uh, Green Bay. And as we've seen with uh, MVS before, he's definitely capable of a lot of spike performances, but inconsistency. But I think in the end, even though Mahomes is now starting to go behind people like Herbert and uh, Josh Allen and drafts, I mean, I think he might be at his more, most affordable price point and bet against Patrick Mahomes at your own peril. Do you see Russell Wilson getting helped with the move to the Broncos? Because man, he has not looked like the same guy the last year or two. Well, I, I think he will be better in Denver simply because I think they're actually going to tailor the offense to his strengths. Uh, in Seattle, I mean, Pete Carroll is just determined to run the ball at all costs, even though he has a Hall of Fame quarterback. So uh, I think that uh, Russ will rebound. Russ is actually going behind a lot of other quarterbacks, so he could be a real value on draft day. Denver's offense was hurt by the loss of Tim Patrick for the season, a, a very reliable performer, but they still have Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy, who are capable of uh, better things uh, without with Russ now in town and everything and without Drew Locke, who was shipped off to Seattle. So I think Russell's presence causes a lot of Broncos to grow. And of course, they have a good running game, too, with the youngster Javante Williams and the veteran Melvin Gordon. So I, I think it's going to be a good year for Russell out in Denver. As far as Seattle goes, well, you've got Geno Smith now at quarterback and that's going to be a big downgrade, of course, to DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. Um, I, I think Metcalf can still be a bet on talent guy if he falls a bit. Um, but Lockett really had the deep ball chemistry with, with Russell Wilson and the capacity for huge games. So it's, it's obviously going to be a long, long season in Seattle. One thing for sure, Russell Wilson can throw it farther in mile high than he could in Seattle in the thin air. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> What's it going to mean for Devontae Adams' fantasy prospects going from Aaron Rodgers to Carr out in Vegas? Well, again, kind of what we were talking about with Tyreek Hill. I mean, it's definitely a quarterback downgrade. However, Derek Carr is a good quarterback. It's not like Devontae Adams is going from Aaron Rodgers to Jamarcus Russell or something like that. So, <laughs> um, you know, with Green Bay, uh, Devontae was always capable of being you know, the number one receiver in fantasy football. I think that ceiling has dropped. I still think he's probably going to stay in the top 12 wide receivers fantasy wise, which, you know, uh, using the terminology, that would be, you know, WR1, for example, if your average fantasy league has 12 teams. So he's definitely, I think, going to still be pretty good out in Vegas, but not quite as good as he was in Green Bay. But he does help Carr. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, to potentially, you know, have his best season because the Raiders also returned their good tight end, Darren Waller, and Hunter Renfro really came on last year. And one thing about the Raiders is, is that target tree is pretty narrow. I mean, outside of drop-off passes to the backs, I mean, it's pretty much Adams, Renfro, and Waller. So I think with any one of those three guys, um, you're going to get some capable production from all three of them. And Green Bay, I think you're going to see a little bit more of a run-oriented offense. Uh, Aaron Jones has obviously been very good. A.J. Dillon really came on last year. Aaron Jones probably will be used more as a receiver this year, which will definitely help uh, his fantasy prospects. And Aaron Rodgers is a guy that in some leagues is not being drafted as a starter anymore. Uh, I think uh, with the Packers, that wide receiver room, it, it's going to be one of those situations where if you could pick the white right, wide right receiver, you're really going to give your team an edge. That could be Alan Lazard, or it could be uh, a rookie, Romeo Dobbs. Romeo, Romeo, where art thou, Romeo? And if you take him, you're hoping the end zone, of course. Uh, they also drafted Christian Watson in the second round, but he's not made as much of an impact as Romeo so far. So I guess if you're going to gamble on a Green Bay receiver, um, you know, it would probably be Lazard or Dobbs. I mean, they still have Randall Cobb, you know, who had a cameo, of course, with the Texans, but um, outside of just, you know, probably an occasional uh, week. I mean, I wouldn't go out of my way to grab Randall Cobb unless it was maybe the very late rounds. We've made references to the Chiefs and the Broncos with Russell Wilson and Carr and the Raiders. I mean, that division, it, it's a dogfight. Is, is there a favorite? Do you, th do you feel, still feel like the, this is the Chiefs to, to lose? If I had to pick a team to win it, I would actually take the chart 
Chargers just because I think they've made some good defensive upgrades. They beat Kansas City last year at, um, well, uh, EEHA Field at Arrowhead, I think is the official name now. And they had a shot to beat him in California and, and kind of gave the game away. So if I had to pick a team, I'd take the Chargers, but it certainly would not shock me if the Chiefs won the division. I don't know if it's worth bringing up, but what does a fantasy football owner do with Deshaun Watson, our old friend here in Houston, who's going to make his debut supposedly against the Texans? What do you do, if anything, if you're a fantasy football owner with Deshaun? Well, I would say if you're in a one quarterback league, just to simply ignore him because you're not going to get that much out of him and you're probably going to draft somebody that's going to be you know, his equal really in a lot of ways. I mean, he certainly, uh, we've seen the numbers he put up with the Texans, but he's also going to be debuting late this season and trying to gel with a new cast and everything like that. Uh, Mari Cooper's a pretty good number one receiver, but uh, he's not as good as DeAndre Hopkins was when Watson had Hopkins to throw to. So if you're in a two quarterback or a super flex format and have the roster space, I could see stashing Watson, but in a regular league, um, I, I just wouldn't do it. I mean, you know, Cooper's probably going to be the only reliable receiver during the Jacoby Brissett era. I mean, if Watson had come along, it might have meant more upside for guys like Donovan People Jones, People's Jones, and David Njoku. But uh, right now, I'd pretty much stick to Cooper. And of course, Nick Chubb obviously is going to be the anchor for the Cleveland offense. Uh, he catches slack in the fantasy circles because he doesn't catch a lot of passes, but. If he falls into the third round, which I have seen, I mean, you know, he has the talent to win games single-handedly for you. So I definitely would still have him on your radar. But as far as the rest of the Browns go, really just him and Cooper at this point. What do you see with the new coaching regimes in Minnesota and with our AFC South rival Jacksonville? Because I'm sure Texans fans are curious, like, what, what, what do you feel like is going to happen with, with those two squads, especially Jacksonville? Well, I think the Jaguars are definitely going to be improved. I mean, uh, as the saying goes, I've seen in many circles, it's going to make a big difference that they have a grown-up coaching them. I mean, it ended kind of badly for Doug Peterson, but let's not forget that the guy won a Super Bowl there. And, you know, when you have Urban Meyer, that was just so awful. I, I mean, Peterson gives them so much stability. I mean, I don't know if he's ever really been considered to be a rah-rah coach like a Pete Carroll, but he's not negative either. So, and he certainly knows how to coach offense and he's won a lot of games with quarterbacks that, you know, some would not consider to be the most premier quarterbacks. I mean, Nick Foles, for example, obviously won a Super Bowl with him. Uh, and he had Carson Wentz playing the best football of his career before he got hurt in 2017. Uh, Jacksonville's also brought in some additional playmakers. I mean, they signed Christian Kirk from Arizona. It was considered to be an outrageous contract, but uh, he should come in and give them a pretty dependable player. They brought in Zay Jones from uh, Las Vegas, who also should give them some productivity. They still have Marvin Jones, who's been a reliable veteran. And they get Travis Etienne back. He was their first round pick last year out of Clemson and missed the entire season. And big things are expected from him this year. Um, he's another one of those guys that's kind of in the, maybe a little bit higher than, than Pierce in the average draft position, but somebody that's regarded as a player with a lot of promise if you do load up on wide receivers in the early rounds. So I'm not expecting Jacksonville to make the playoffs or anything like that, but I certainly think they're capable of showing a pretty good amount of pro improvement on offense. And I think Trevor Lawrence, is a guy you can draft as your number two quarterback and uh, feel confident in starting him if you had to plug him into the lineup. Minnesota is another team with a breath of fresh air. Mike Zimmer certainly wasn't as bad as Urban Meyer, but I think players are tired of his act. They brought in Kevin O'Connell from the Sean McVay coaching tree out in Los Angeles, and he's just considered to be a breath of fresh air. He's modernizing the offense. Many people think Justin Jefferson can be the number one wide receiver in fantasy football. They still have Dalvin Cook uh, leading the way in the backfield, outstanding running back, uh, the always reliable veteran Adam Thielen out there. And I know Kirk Cousin has, Cousins has his fair share of critics, but I think he's poised for a big year this year too. So Minnesota is a sleeper offense to watch. Let me ask you this about just general fantasy draft prospects. 
did you have any guys that you were really high going into the draft as far as sleepers this year or so, somebody you think people might be underestimating? Well, I talked about uh, some of the quarterbacks and everything and, and, you know, getting back to Jalen Hurts. I mean, he's a guy that's going to go after, you know, some players as well. I mean, he's probably still going to be among the top 10 quarterbacks drafted in most drafts, but he's put up the numbers without as many weapons. And now you give him a guy like AJ Brown. I mean, he's definitely somebody uh, I'm happy to draft. Um, I think at the tight end position, um, that's always a tough position to find some folks at. I think there's a couple of ways to play it. You can either spend an early round pick on a Mark Andrews or a Travis Kelsey, but I think three guys that are kind of towards the middle can give you pretty reliable production. Uh, TJ Hawkinson uh, back from injury with Detroit, Dallas Goddard, who I mentioned earlier from Philadelphia, and Dalton Schultz uh, with Dallas. I definitely think that uh, Schultz is going to be stepping up more with Amari Cooper gone and Michael Gallup and James Washington ailing. Uh, I think C.D. Lamb actually for Dallas has the potential to have his best season yet because he is now the guy there for sure, and they're really going to need him. And, of course, he's working with a good quarterback in Dak Prescott. One more question as far as the Texans go in their division. This is outside of fantasy, um, but what do you think is going to happen in the AFC South? Does, do the Titans fall back a little bit? Do you, do you feel like there could be – another team that can take that division? Yeah, I mean, I see the Titans falling back. I mean, you go back to the disappointing playoff loss, the loss of A.J. Brown. I mean, uh, at some point, there's going to be a quarterback controversy. Ryan Tannehill is not exactly the most popular athlete in Nashville, and Malik Willis has looked good this preseason. So I, I personally think the Colts will win the division. Matt Ryan admittedly may be a little bit past his prime, but he gives them an upgrade. I mean, they made the playoffs with Phillip Rivers in his final season back in 2020. Uh, they may only get two or three more seasons from Matt Ryan, but uh, you know he's an upgrade. They still have the awesome Jonathan Taylor. And Michael Pittman is definitely a guy that is poised for big growth this year, both in reality and fantasy. He's somebody that... Certainly, if you can get him uh, in the third or fourth round, uh, I think you're going to be very happy with that selection. I'm super excited to see what's going to happen in the FC South because I'm actually real interested in the Texans and real excited about them. Unusually so this year, just to see what Levy can do with these guys and what a couple of these guys can do. There's a couple of guys we mentioned earlier in fantasy as well. Um, you see why I love Andy Rio. He's a NFL machine. He knows his stuff backwards and forwards. He definitely knows... His fantasy stuff he's written for websites for decades. And if you got questions for Andy, tweet him at Andy Rio. Always fun to have you on. We'll talk to you again next week, Andy. Thanks. All right. Sounds great. You're listening to Houston Sports Talk. Hey, you can support the show by subscribing on YouTube and commenting on the videos. Listen to Houston Sports Talk on Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, and Google. Don't forget to tell a friend and share our show on social media. Spread the word, everybody. Thanks for listening.